And we're really excited to have you along with this journey as the Stay Active Method takes all the giants that have come before us and advances that a little bit farther. And I'm really excited to see as my energy starts to wane 50 years from now, who comes along and takes the Stay Active Method and advances a little farther. Hello and welcome to season two of Unlock Potential. I'm Brian Delaney. Our focus this season is fitness. I'll be joined by Dr. Corey Duvall, who's going to guide us through his protocol for getting into your best shape so we can live our best lives and serve others well. Hi, and welcome back to season two of Unlock Potential. I'm Dr. Corey Duvall, and this is episode 31, where we continue our discussion of the history of physical exercise, the history of the human body, and the future, which is the stay active method. We build ourselves up to be the physically fittest humans we can be so that we are maximally helpful to others. Now, as we move along, we get to exercise science. So because of the scientific revolution and because of these early circus strongmen showing what's possible in the human body, we started to get scientists studying, hey, we see what these people are doing. We see the changes that are going on. Let's study it and let's understand it. And so exercise scientists basically looked at all of those individuals, all of those groups of people and said, hey, what's going on in there? How can we understand and improve the techniques over time? And that is incredibly helpful. One of the things that came out of exercise, uh, exercise science is the concept of VO2 max, the amount of oxygen that your body can utilize when working at a high level. And so VO2 max has been shown to be assisted with endurance style exercise, low intensity for long duration, and it's been shown to aid in health span, so how healthy somebody is for a long period of time, and longevity of life. Also understood is heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is in a given set of time, you have a certain number of beats that your heart moves at. And heart rate variability is sometimes it's a little faster and sometimes it's a little slower. And so for any given rate over that time period, if it speeds up and slows down, that shows a less stressed, healthier body. Well, that also mimics the rise and fall that we've talked about in previous episodes, the daily rhythm that our body goes through, the monthly rhythm, the seasonal rhythm, the yearly rhythm that our body goes through, periods with more intensity and periods with less intensity. And so heart rate variability shows a healthier body and helping our bodies line up to that rhythm will help us over time. One other thing that exercise science has shown us is that the strength of our legs, the strength of our grip, and our freedom to move in what's known as a sitting to standing test is what contributes to health span. So as our body ages, if we have good grip strength, if we have good leg strength, and if we are capable of sitting on the ground and standing back up, the fewer of the body parts we use for that process, the healthier we are for a longer period of time. The less likely we are to have a fall or to die suddenly when we're capable of those things. And so you can see that exercise science is showing us that lots of low intensity activity is healthy for us. You can see that the variability between bursts of low intensity and bursts of high intensity are healthy for us. You can see that utilizing a broad range of motion, getting all the way to the ground and back up is healthy for us. And the body as a single unit, acknowledging that the leg strength 
and the grip strength, the upper body and the lower body being capable is what helps us to live a long, healthy, happy life. So you can see that modern healthcare attempts to utilize the mind over the body at times. It disempowers the patient because what it does is it puts the mind at a priority and it's the mind of the healthcare practitioner. The healthcare practitioner is going to look at the patient it's going to look at the tests that they give to the patient, and it's going to come up with something that they do to the patient. The mind is going to understand the body, and the mind is going to fix the body without incorporating the actual activity required for the health of the body. Ultimately, this creates disempowered feelings within the patient, because if the patient is dependent upon the knowledge of the physician, if it's dependent on the knowledge of the chiropractor or the knowledge of the physical therapist to take care of them, that's a disempowering situation. Instead, we need to link the mind and the body. We need the practitioners to organize helping those patients utilize their body in an appropriate way. Utilizing their mind and their understanding and their ingenuity and expertise to guide the body in the right way. And when that's done, that creates an empowered situation for the patient. That creates an empowered, I've got this, I can improve, I can be better philosophy for that, for that client. Now, as modern healthcare is taking off, as vitalism is taking a back seat, so the idea that the power that made the body can heal the body is getting suppressed somewhat. As uh, modern medicine is coming up and as uh, modern psychology is coming up, what we're finding is that there's still a desire in a portion of the population to engage in physical fitness. These are things in the late 1900s, like aerobics classes, like personal training that make attempts at teaching people how to be bodybuilders. There's uh, the idea that people are jogging or moving slower than a running pace for an extended period of time, attempting to mimic the long, low intensity activity. And so there's a swell of individuals that want to be physically capable, that acknowledge that the balance of the body and the mind is the important thing and want to take that on for themselves, but they don't have enough guidance. They don't have enough brought together. And that's when the beauty of CrossFit came about because there were a few small niche populations where people were focusing entirely on bodybuilding or entirely on Olympic weightlifting or entirely on strongman or entirely on their endurance sport. But the groups weren't together. You either focus on this or that or the other thing. And if you weren't doing any of those and you were kind of stuck in the middle in an aerobics class or with a personal trainer who was doing a poor job at teaching you bodybuilding, there wasn't a lot of measurement for those individuals in the middle. There wasn't a lot of comparison among the different groups. And the founder of CrossFit came about and said, hey, we've got to bring all these things together. I'm glad that you're great at Olympic weightlifting, but I want you to do some strongman stuff too. I'm glad that you're an endurance athlete, but I want you to do some powerlifting as well. I'm glad that you're a bodybuilder, but I want you to be an endurance athlete and an Olympic weightlifter. Let's open things up. And for everybody who's going to do that, let's measure it. Let's take a look at your exercise and put a number on it each day. Let's take a look at what your body is capable of and give you a check mark for whether you completed it or not. 
And that was revolutionary because instead of simply coming into the gym and doing some things and then leaving for the day, you came in, you had a plan, you followed that plan and measured it. And then that measurement could be directly attributable across time to your health. And that was revolutionary at the time. I remember hearing Greg Glassman talk about that. And now looking back, it seems so obvious that that's what we needed to do, but at the time, completely mind blowing. And so you can see that we had drifted we had some groups doing some of the body stuff. We had some groups in healthcare taking on the mind. And not a lot was done with spirit. Not a lot was done with the interconnectedness because that had largely been lost in existentialism and the scientific revolution and the separation of the body and mind, the spirit got lost as well. And what Greg Glassman started to see was that when people were challenging themselves and reaching and measuring and striving, that that created attraction, that, tre that created camaraderie, that created a unit and a community. And so where a lot of gyms started to become more televisions, more mirrors to look at yourself, more and more headphones and isolating from what's around you, his gym and the gyms that he inspired started to have people challenge themselves, measure that challenge, and that became inspiring for those around them. That the challenge and the measurement created an up level of the human. That using lots of low intensity activity, bursts of high intensity activity, broad ranges of motion, and using the body as a single unit, measuring that marking that and doing that to the best of your ability and making progress over time was so attractive that other people wanted to do it. And communities started to build. Connectedness started to build. People started to want to help each other out through the process. Hey, I see that you're challenging. I've been there. I want to be there to help you along. And that is super inspiring. CrossFit was hands down the biggest fitness revolution since fitness was required. No other fitness program has brought about more gyms and more participants than CrossFit. And it's inspired me for going on more than 15 years now. It's inspired me to build the Stay Active Method in order to help see a little bit farther down the road. We have all of these giants, these early humans that took care of themselves so well that they were able to create agriculture and stay in one place and farm and create a community in that one place. Those farmers started to develop themselves so successfully that the mind started to expand and they started to create more and more ideas and discover similarities in the experiences of themselves and those around them. That they were able to become so aware of their surroundings and then become aware of yourself and start to see that sometimes things are predictable and we're gonna to try to measure how predictable something is and that's the scientific revolution. And using that predictability could create so much power of our ideas that there was momentum to those ideas, that our body could take a back seat and that industry could take off, that machines could take off and do things for the physical body at a greater degree than our physical body actually could. We're standing on those shoulders so that I have a computer in front of me, so that I have cameras around me, so that we can put this onto a data network and for all of you to be able to observe what we've put together, for me to be able to observe everything that you have put together and so that we can all learn as we go along. And so I'm standing on the shoulders of all of those giants, taking the next step a little bit farther. CrossFit was and is beautiful because it said, hey, let's measure these things. And what gets measured gets managed. 
And it is incredibly challenging to measure some aspects of our progress in the gym. And because it's so difficult to measure some aspects, we tend sometimes to fall away from it, to not work really hard to understand it and to just kind of go along with it. Now, that is great as long as you're making progress, but when you reach a limitation and you've got this desire to be better, you've got this desire to grow and you hit a limitation and you're blind and you don't know what step to take, that can be really demoralizing. You might just stop altogether. You might back up and say, oh, CrossFit's not for me. You might say, oh, my body is not built to be more capable than it is right now. And when you back away like that, when you change directions like that, your body feels it. And your soul, you feel that lack. You realize I could be capable of more and I'm not doing that. But I don't know what step to take. Well, if we measure the right things, we can guide that right next step. If we utilize the information from Olympic weightlifters, we can guide that next step. If we use information from endurance athletes and from powerlifters and from bodybuilders, and if we organize that the right way and we track it the right way, we can help take that next step. If you're tired of feeling low on energy and settling for the scraps, it's time for your personal revolution. We are helping people go from the person that they have been to the person they were truly meant to be and helping people get to the next level in their life, their business, and their relationships. Follow us. The idea behind CrossFit was that you're going to do something different every day that you're in the gym. And that difference is stimulating for the mind. Because if every Monday you're doing the same thing, and every Wednesday you're doing the same thing, and every Friday you're doing the same thing, eventually the mind gets bored. It needs something new. It needs novelty. And a lot of those other groups, those power lifters and the bodybuilders and the Olympic weightlifters and the endurance athletes are so regimented and so planned, they know exactly what they're going to do. And that is only possible with a select few individuals. However, variety is great for the mind. And so CrossFit came in and said, hey, I know this is all planned and regimented. It doesn't have to be so planned and regimented. And then if it doesn't have to be so planned and regimented, we can change it up on a regular basis. And when we change it up, that's so stimulating for the mind that you stay at it. And that's been hugely successful. So many people get started with CrossFit and stay with it for decades. Probably more than any of those other fitness components. However, I have seen that variety is great for the mind and eventually tips to chaos in the body. Because I talked about rising up and reaching a limitation. And when you reach that limitation, there's a certain amount of work that you need to do to push past that limitation and to expand that limitation. And if you approach that limitation and quit altogether, you don't make progress. But if you approach that limitation and then just have an exercise the next day that doesn't move in that same direction, you're also losing the potential to push that edge. And so people would come into my CrossFit gym and they would make progress for the first six weeks, the first six months, the first couple of years. And as they would make progress, they would be super motivated and super excited. And every time they did an exercise and every time they did a workout, they were a little more capable than they were previously. Super exciting. But eventually they would start to go, ooh, my shoulder's kind of bothering me a little bit. Now, it wouldn't stop them from what they were doing, but they started to notice, ooh, their shoulder is kind of bothering them a little bit. They would start to notice, oh, my knee's bothering me a little bit. Or, oh, after that workout, my, my back was more sore than normal. And when they would start to notice those things, they wanted to seek the assistance of a healthcare practitioner. And the healthcare practitioner had 
come about with physical rehabilitation as its history, but they had not understood CrossFit as thoroughly as they could because CrossFit was new. It was new to me. It was new to them. This is a wide open field. And so let's bring back to physical therapy because when I was in college, when I was in chiropractic college, I realized that physical therapy and advanced chiropractic, a more Western approach to chiropractic, were very similar. And a lot of physical therapists and chiropractors would go to the similar postgraduate seminars and would be in online forums discussing techniques and protocols. And they were very similar. And if we go back to the history of physical therapy, we saw that it was created to help people with polio. People who had significant trauma in their physical body from an infectious disease. And so their muscles would not function correctly. And so the physical therapist would make up for that by moving the body. They would stretch it. They would move it passively in order to help that person move along. They would focus on the particular body part that was irritated or a problem in order to help it out. Now, at the same time, the most popular exercise style at the time was bodybuilding. And bodybuilding was supremely focused on looking a certain way. We have one heart and it's not in the center of our chest, it's off to the side. We have two lungs. There's three lobes over here and two lobes over here. So right from the center outward, we're a little bit imbalanced. We drive on one side of the car and not on the other. And we get in and out of bed, typically on one side and not the other. And we have a particular stairway in our house that we tend to step more with one leg and not the other. And what that means is you are imbalanced from the center out. Both who you are and what you do is imbalanced in some way. And so bodybuilding was so focused on creating what looked like balance, it often led to imbalances actually within the body, imbalances in what the human was capable of. And so you had physical therapists who were dealing with polio patients as a profession, but then we get the polio vaccine and the cases of polio start going down at the same time. And as the cases of polio start going down at the same time, you have this whole slew of people who are used to stretching people and assessing for muscle weakness, needing something to do. You have a whole portion of the population that's focused on bodybuilding and creating perfect symmetry despite having imbalances. And you have a whole other section of the population who is taking on office jobs and sitting for long periods of time. And these three groups merge together. The physical therapists start to help out the people who are involved in the fitness culture by teaching them to stretch their muscles and to focus on particular isolated movements in order to strengthen those particularly isolated parts. They start to develop tests to assess those things, focusing on isolating the body. You've got these office workers who have very little low intensity activity. They have very little burst of high intensity activity. They use minimal portions of their range of motion and they don't think about their body as a single unit. And now they're actually taught that because they have a shoulder issue, because they have pain in their shoulder, they have a shoulder issue. Because they have pain in their knee, they have imbalances around their knee. And so bodybuilders focusing on creating hypertrophy of musculature in a particular way, physical therapists and rehab practitioners needing something to do and wanting to help people and having the skills of stretching and muscle testing and general healthcare or general office workers just having physical ailments that they don't understand. And all of these three merge together for a significant period of time, creating the idea that the body has an injury in a particular area, needs fixing in that particular area, and should be focused on building muscle just around that particular area. 
CrossFit came in and said, hey, the body is a single unit. Let's stop thinking about arm day, leg day, back day. Let's think about the body as an entire unit. And so now these people are inspired. They're like, yeah, I love using my whole body on a regular basis. Sometimes going heavy, sometimes going light for longer periods of time, sometimes just switching it up a bunch in the middle. They love that. It feels good. It feels fun. It's helping them understand their body as a, as a single unit. And then they start to encounter a challenge and they seek guidance through that particular challenge. Hey, I'm loving what I'm doing, but my shoulder's starting to hurt. What do I do? And the practitioners say, your shoulder's hurt? Well, we got to fix the shoulder. Your knee is hurt? We got to fix the knee. Your back is hurt? We're going to make sure that you move perfectly so that your back stays in a perfect position. And if, if your back is perfect, you're going to be perfect. You're going to be pain-free. But that is the mind so focused on the body that it creates fragility. That creates a disempowered awareness of the physical symptoms. I want to layer back here a little bit because with modern healthcare also came modern psychology. The idea that we need to talk things out and create rational reasonable understandings of our experiences. Hey, somebody did something to me. What do I do about it? They needed guidance through that. Hey, I'm having this experience right now. What do I do about it? Well, let's think about all of the different options and help you choose one. That's one portion of modern psychology. That has evolved to the most evidence-based form, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, cognitive behavioral therapy is largely helping people identify logical fallacies. It's helping them identify when something is a response that's not reasonable. If we go all the way back to ancient Greek and Roman philosophers, the Stoics, that's where that form originally came from, logic and reason and understanding our body and understanding the impacts of what we do to make a choice moving forward. And so psychology got separated into, hey, let's think about our situation. And as we start focusing on thinking about the situation and sometimes we overreact to things, sometimes somebody says something or somebody does something and we have a reaction or a response that doesn't align reasonably with the situation. A small thing is done to us and we overreact. And so those psychologists started paying attention and they realized that they were having physical experiences as well. That it wasn't just the yelling that they did, it was the heat in their chest. It wasn't just the crying that they would go into for no reason. It was the heaviness that they felt. It wasn't just the worry about the public speaking performance. They would feel fluttery in their abdomen. And so you got this branch of psychology and therapy that became known as somatic therapy. Soma meaning body. Somatic therapy meaning, hey, understand the feelings of your body. And so we have rational thought and our physical experience, our feelings over time. And we want to create alignment of those. Check out the official Unlock Potential store where inspiration meets style. Explore our exclusive collection of gear inspired by the transformational messages straight from our Unlock Potential podcast. From trendy apparel that embraces the power of positivity to accessories that fuel your motivation. We've got something for every go-getter. Spread the messages of empowerment, energy, and motivation that you get from the Unlock Potential podcast by grabbing your gear today. And so the Stay Active Method looks at the origins of physical therapy and chiropractic, the origins of healthcare, and it brings those things together. It looks at the origins of the human physical activity and experience, the origins of the human body, and says, hey, let's help weave that in here. It takes a look at the 
inspiration that's created when people challenge themselves on a regular basis and support each other. And it loops that in as well. It takes the origins of the physical body, the origins of the mind, the origins of the spirit. It takes all of the scientific revolution. It takes the industrial revolution and the impacts on the human body. It takes the knowledge of the group of people that said, hey, my body is not challenging myself enough. I need to challenge myself more. The early circus strongmen. It takes the variance of the early circus strongmen and says, hey, what did we learn from them? What can be helpful? It takes a look at vitalism and the energy that helps the body, heals the body. The energy that created the body is what allows our life force to flow and our feelings to continue moving. It takes a look at exercise science and what that has taught us about normal daily rhythms of our body and about what creates safety and health and longevity for the future. It takes a look at modern fitness and where it fell short and the transition to CrossFit and where it created a groundswell of excitement and improvement. And the Stay Active Method brings those together and it says, hey, how are you feeling right now? And when you figure out how you're feeling right now, exercise science and all of those who came before us is going to help you select a particular exercise that's going to help move that experience forward. Whether that means recovering from what you've done previously or creating new capacity as you go forward. The Stay Active Method helps by measuring all of those things that you've done, looking at your single and low repetition, high weight efforts, by taking a look at your low intensity and long duration efforts, and by bringing those two things together, helping you choose what is the right next step. It helps you learn that you have some influence over those things as well. Part of that early history was a form of physical, spiritual connection known as yoga. Yoga's origins were about breath and that breath is what helps move the body. As we came along, exercise science started to realize that faster breath was associated with short-term physiology and slower breath was associated with long-term physiology. There are various breathing methods and breathing techniques out there that tend to go down into a rabbit hole and get really focused on breath itself, but not how breath influences the rest of us. And the stay active method helps us to engage in exercise in a way engage in exercise based on how our body is feeling and at the right time incorporates breath to realize that we have some influence over what our body is capable of. All the way from ancient yoga and what our body is capable of all the way up through to the stay active method to where you challenge yourself with the best next step and then your body goes through some damage and needs to heal. And it's going to show you how to take that best next step to heal. It's going to show you how to treat your body in the morning and then how to recover best in the afternoon and evening. And CrossFit has shown us that the more you engage in that yourself, the more helpful you are to others, both in actual physical giving, both in actual physical doing, and in inspiring them to raise themselves up. Because anytime you back away from a challenge, you feel less about yourself. Anytime you encounter a limitation and a difficulty and you struggle to find your way around and just stop right there or avoid it, you feel a little worse. But when you have people around you, peers and comrades and mentors to help you understand, hey, this is what that limitation means. This is the way you need to move. And after you've moved that way, you'll have your next breakthrough. To be there while the patience that it takes to get to that level is required 
to walk with you alongside you on that journey, you're going to be able to create that. You're going to be able to be a part of that as we move forward. The stay active method is incorporating measurement, incorporating feeling, balancing structure and sensation, balancing form and flow, is balancing the wide history of what we came from and will allow us to be the best that we can as we move forward. I'm really excited for you to join along with us. You'll be the hero of your own journey as you go through this process and see your own strength improve and your body composition and your magnetism and your assistance for others grows. You can join us and as you go through your own hero's path, you can get a mentor to help you along the way. And the more often you go through that, the more capable you become, the more you can then start to mentor others as well. And we're really excited to have you along with this journey as the Stay Active Method takes all the giants that have come before us and advances that a little bit farther. And I'm really excited to see as my energy starts to wane 50 years from now, who comes along and takes the Stay Active Method and advances a little farther and helps us adjust it and guide it so that humanity is more capable and more assistive for everyone and everything around us. I appreciate you joining today. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Unlock Potential. For exclusive content, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon. Follow us across all socials at TheBrianDelaney and visit our website at TheBrianDelaney.com to shop our gear and see what's coming up next. The information and views expressed by our host or guests on the Unlock Potential podcast are their own, and not a substitute for professional medical or fitness advice. Always consult with qualified healthcare or fitness professionals before starting any new exercise program or making changes to your current routine.